Hi, and welcome to Section 6, Creating Forms with the Form API. In the previous section, we learned how to design the front end and create a custom theme. We also learned how to modify a Twig template and use Asset Management System and Breakpoint Module. In this section, we will work with forms using the Form API. The coming videos of this section will show you how you can create forms using HTML5 elements, perform validation, process the form data, and also alter other forms. So let's begin with the first video of this section, creating a form. In this video, we will first create a form, which will be accessible from a menu path. This will involve creating a route that tells Drupal to invoke our form and display it to the end user. Drupal provides a robust API for creating and managing forms without writing any HTML. Drupal handles form building, validation, and submission. Drupal handles the request to either build the form or process the HTTP POST request. This allows developers to simply define the elements in a form, provide any additional validation if needed, and then handle a successful submission through specific methods. Forms are defined as classes, which implement Drupal Core, Form, and Form Interface Superclass. The form base serves as a utility class that is intended to be extended. We will extend this class to create a new form. Since we will be writing the code, we will want to have a custom module. Creating a custom module in Drupal is simply creating a folder and an info.yml file. Let's begin now by creating a folder under Modules in our Drupal folder called Drupal Form. So, in the Drupal Form folder, create a file and name it drupalform.info.yml. The info.yml file is what Drupal will parse to discover modules. Now, open this file. The example of this module's info.yml file looks like this. Here, the name will be your module's name, and the description will be listed on the Extend page. Specifying the core tells Drupal what version of Drupal it is built for. Section 4 covers how to create a module in depth. So let's move ahead and create a source folder in our module directory. Now, in this directory, create a form directory, which will hold the class that defines your form, and then create a file called examplefor.php in your module's source form directory. Drupal utilizes PSR4 to discover and auto-load classes. For brevity, this defines that there should be one class per file, with each file name matching the class name. The folder structure will also mimic the namespace expected. So now we will edit the examplefor.php file and add the proper PHP namespace classes used, and the class itself. Here, the namespace defines the class in your module's form directory. The autoloader will now look into the Drupal form module path and load the example form class from the source form directory. The use statement allows us to use just the class name when referencing form base and, in the next steps, form state interface. Otherwise, we would be forced to use the fully qualified namespace path for each class whenever it is used. FormBase is an abstract class and requires us to implement four remaining interface methods, which is getFormID, buildForm, validateForm, and submitForm. The latter two are covered in the later videos. However, we will need to define the method stubs, which you can see here. This code flushes out the initial class definition from the previous step. FormBase provides utility methods and does not satisfy the interface requirements for FormState interface. We define those here, as they are unique across each form definition. The getFormID method returns a unique string to identify the form, for example, site information. You may encounter some forms that append underscore form to the end of their form ID. This is not required, and it is just a naming convention often found in previous versions of Drupal. The build form method is covered here. The validate form and submit form methods are both called during the form API processes and are covered in this video.
The buildForm method will be invoked to return form API elements that are rendered to the end user. We will add a simple text field to ask for a company name and a submit button. We have added a form element definition to the form array. Form elements are defined with a minimum of a type to specify what the element is and a title to act as a label. The title uses the T method to ensure that it is translatable. Adding a submit button is done by providing an element with the type submit. So let's save and close the file. Now, to access the form, we will create file drupalform.routing.yml in the modules folder. A route entry will be created to instruct Drupal to use Form Builder to create and display our form. In Drupal, all routes have a name, and this example defines it as drupalform.form. Routes then define a path attribute and override default variables. This route definition has altered the route's title specified it as a form, and given the fully qualified namespace path to this form's class. Routes need to be passed as requirements property with specifications, or else the route will be denied access. Now, save this file and close it, and go back to your website. Visit the Extend page, and enable the Drupal Form Example module that we created. Now, click on Install, and you can see the module Drupal form example has been enabled. Now let's visit slash Drupal dash example dash form. And the form is now visible, as you can see on screen. Now we need to understand how it worked. We created a route to display the form. By passing the form variable in the default section of our route entry, we are telling the route controller how to render our route's content. The fully qualified class name, which includes the namespace, is passed to a method located in the form builder. The route controller will invoke getForm based on the video. At the same time, this can be manually called to embed the form elsewhere. A form builder instance that implements form builder interface will then process the form by calling buildForm and initiate the rendering process. The buildForm method is expected to return an array of form elements and other API options. This will be sent to the render system to output the form as HTML. Many components make up a form created through Drupal's Form API. Let us explore a few of them in depth. First, we will talk about form element definitions. A form is a collection of form elements, which are types of plugin in Drupal 8. Plugins are small pieces of swappable functionalities in Drupal 8. Plugins and plugin development are covered in the next section. At the time of creating this video, the Drupal.org form API reference table was severely out of date and did not reflect all of the form element types available. So, here are some of the most common element properties that can be used. Weight. This is used to alter the position of a form element in a form. By default, elements will be displayed in the order in which they were added to the form array. Defining a weight allows a developer to control element positions. Default value. This gives a developer the ability to pre-fill the element with a value. For example, when building configuration forms that have existing data, or when editing an entity. Placeholder. This is new to Drupal 8. Drupal 8 provides a new HTML5 support, and this attribute will set the placeholder attribute on the HTML input. Next is the form state. The form state interface object represents the current state of the form and its data. The form state contains user submitted data for the form along with build state information. Redirection after form submission is handled through the form state as well. You will interact more with the form state during the validation and submission videos. Finally, let's talk about the form cache. Drupal utilizes a cache table for forms. This holds the build table, as identified by form build identifiers. This allows Drupal to validate forms during AJAX requests and easily builds them when required. It is important to keep the form cache in persistent storage, Otherwise, there may be repercussions, such as a loss of form data or invalidating forms. 
You can also see this documentation on Form API in Drupal 8. Also, you can check out the Form API reference at. Fantastic! In this video, we extended the Form Base class to create a new form and added the form descriptions.